Before I begin this morning, I just want to say thank you to all of you. Thank you for asking how our week in Detroit was a week ago. A week ago, um, your group from LCC was worshiping on Sunday morning with 30,000 other brothers and sisters in Christ. It was a wonderful week, and we look forward to sharing about our week and the service that we did um, on August 16th. We look forward to sharing about that. If you have questions, please see Sarah Kleist, who read. She was on our trip. You can see Stacy. She was there. Um, we love to answer questions, so we look forward to sharing about our trip, and thank you. Thank you for your support and for your prayers as we traveled there and back. With that, would you join me in prayer? Good and gracious God, thanks for gathering us this morning. Thanks for being present in this place. Lord, thanks for the gift that you give of abundance, the abundance of your love, the abundance of grace, the abundance of mercy and forgiveness, the abundance of hope and peace. Thank you. Now, Lord God, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be holy and acceptable in your sight. Our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I couldn't just read our readings from Second Kings and from our gospel this morning without having a loaf of bread. It just did not seem right. They talked about bread, so we needed to have bread with us this morning. And I have to admit, this isn't just any bread. This is Hawaiian bread king's bread one of my favorite 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 breads of all time so i'm going to start it over here and you can share it if you like tear off a piece it's wonderful so just pass it around it's one of my favorite favorite breads as i was thinking about bread this morning i was thinking about how much we really do love bread and we love pastry don't we when I lived in Cannon Falls, there was a bakery there called High Quality Bakery. It was right downtown Cannon Falls. And there is no way that you could be anywhere in downtown Cannon Falls without smelling the wonderful smells that came out of the bakery. Whether it be the bread that they were making or one of the things that they were known for were those big cinnamon rolls and those gooey, gooey caramel rolls. It was wonderful. It just kind of called you in. You couldn't even go by it. You just had to stop in at the high quality bakery and get your pastry. Well, we do love our bread and we do love our pastry. Well, I wonder, I wonder, how, how do you eat your cinnamon roll or your caramel roll? I think about that, that there are kind of layers when you think about that. If you're like me, you kind of take off that first layer, then you take off that second layer, and then you take off that third layer, just waiting, just waiting to get to that gooey, gooey, gooey center. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like that gooey center. And so as I think about that and that gooey center, and I think about bread and our scripture from 2 Kings and from our gospel, I think this Sunday we peel off one layer, one layer of this image of Jesus as the bread of life. We have the opportunity for the next number of Sundays to dwell with this image of Jesus as the bread of life and what that means for us as disciples of Christ. So this morning, I have the opportunity just to peel off that first layer. So we're not to the gooey center yet. We're just taking off that first layer. So as I was thinking about that first layer that I'm peeling off this morning, there are two words that kind of keep popping out of my mind as I think about our readings from 2 Kings and the Gospel. One of the first word that I think about is abundance. Abundance. When you hear that word, what do you think of? Abundance. More than enough. Plentiful. Sometimes when we think about abundance, it's too much. It's overflowing, like that Hawaiian king bread. It's kind of overflowing out of its pan that it is on. So we think about abundance. The other word that I think about this morning is provision. Provision. 
What do you think about when you hear that word provision? The basics, the necessary things. It's not overflowing. I think about our military personnel getting provisions that they need, the kind of the requirements of what they need, just enough. Well, there's a third word that then pops up when we think about abundance and provision, and that word is enough. When you hear that word enough, is it a positive word, or is it enough, or is it a negative word? I think about when you're having company over to our homes. You want to make sure that we have enough. Or sometimes when you're having a gathering and you realize that more folks had come to the gathering than you had anticipated, you kind of tell your committee, "You guys eat after everyone else," because I'm not sure. There's going to be enough. Has that ever happened to you? Well, we kind of think of enough sometimes as not always a positive. We kind of tend to think, "Oh, it's just enough." Even how we say it, it's just enough. So I wonder, when we have enough, are we grateful? Are we thankful for enough? So how do each of you define abundance, provision, enough? How do you see those words kind of living out in our world, in our community, in our own lives? I love our four verses from Second Kings this morning. The man, remember, the man that comes with his bread, he comes with his first fruit, this bread. He comes, I think, with eyes of scarcity. He wonders: Is his bread going to be enough? Is he going to have enough for the people? And is his bread the best that he could be offering? You notice that it was called barley bread. I have read, and I have been told that barley bread was kind of the lowest of the lowest of the bread. It was kind of tough. And hard and grainy, and it was not Hawaiian king's bread, which was up here. So he wondered: Was his bread enough? Was his bread worthy? Was he worthy to bring this bread? He thought all of these things as he brought his bread. I wonder: Are we sometimes like that man that brings his bread? Do we have eyes, eyes of scarcity, wondering if we are worthy, wondering what we bring is enough? Those eyes, those eyes sometimes deceive us, thinking that what we bring isn't enough. Well, then there's Elisha, Elisha, who comes and he meets this man and says, and. Elisha has different eyes. There are eyes of hope, eyes of enough, eyes of worthiness, eyes of abundance. And he tells the man who brought his bread, "Your gift is wonderful. Your gift is enough." And changes the man's eyes. And the prophet's eyes are eyes that invite God into the problem. And into the solution, it's eyes that invite God in. It's eyes that have an expectation that God's abundance is capable of meeting each and every one of us in our need, and it appears in our need. I was not here when the storm hit two weeks ago, but I have had the opportunity to hear stories of the storm, and I know. That it, the storm hit, and there was great need. But I also know that out of that great need, God's abundance came. People came and helped each other. Neighbors began to help neighbors. Neighbors were there checking in on each other. God's abundance was shown in the midst of our needs. And then. The prophet shows us eyes of the miracle of life in the midst of death. Each and every one of us 
has a storm story. And we now, as we continue day by day to move forward, we begin to see that new life kind of reappearing slowly, slowly. We are given those eyes of a miracle of life, even in the midst of the devastation that we have seen. So I think the first layer that the prophet helps us look, take off is those eyes, those eyes of scarcity that we have. The prophet says, take those eyes off. Take those eyes off. Let me remind you of eyes of hope, eyes of abundance, eyes of worthiness. Let me give you those eyes. So I wonder, what eyes do you have? What eyes do you need to have? What eyes are on our community? I think the second layer that gets peeled off this morning as we think about Jesus as the bread of life is Jesus' interaction with the 5,000 who were present and how he interacted with those that were hungry. And if we think about there probably was more than 5,000 there that day with women and children. There was probably maybe even close to 20,000, 10,000, 15,000. There was a lot of people. And I can imagine in that crowd, there were folks from all over, from all walks of life. And they came. They were curious. They were curious about Jesus and what the signs that he was doing, what he was teaching. They came for various reasons. They came to be healed. They came to hear words of hope and life. And some, I'm sure, came because they had questions about who Jesus was and what he was doing. I like to think that each and every one of us are in that crowd. We are a part of that large crowd that day. We come to that place to that crowd with all that we have, all that we are, hoping, hoping for something. Hoping, hoping. So what do you bring to that crowd this morning? Where do you need to hear words of hope? In our hoping, in our yearning, in our hunger, Jesus shows up shows up in earthly elements, in the bread, and the fish, in community, reminds us that God sustains us, not from a distance, but sustains us right in the middle of where life is, comes right in the middle. God is present in Jesus, and Jesus, I think the second layer, is that Jesus makes a claim of who he is. Jesus says, I am, I am the abundance of God, and I am going to show you that abundance. And God does what we cannot do. If we acted how God acted, we would all be our own gods. But we are reminded that God acts, that God does this miracle of feeding the hungry, of giving hope to that crowd. And so this morning, dear friends, as we gather as a crowd, that second layer, we have Jesus who says, I am, and I bring hope, I bring life to where you are hungering, whether it be a physical hunger or all kinds of other hunger. Jesus is present. I am present in that hunger. So we will continue to peel these layers off of this bread of life. So dear friends, may you know that the bread of life, the I am, is for you. Amen.